Welcome to my channel and my video explaining stealing in Final Fantasy VII. So I made a separate video on the Vagris Claw, which uh, is the hardest item to steal in the game. And spoiler, it's a mess to steal that, that item. Uh, and that got me more interested in stealing and how it works, so here comes my video on stealing in general. To start things off, you find the steel materia in the sewers after Don Corneo's mansion, and you will only find one of these, but if you want more of them, they can also be bought in the Calm Materia store. There are two ways to steal from all target at once, and the first one is by using the steel as well materia, which can be found after the underwater reactor, where you find the leviathan scales, which in turn gives you access to the steel as well materia in Wutai. Now if you combine this with for example restore, and also have a restore all combo, you can cause cure on all enemies and steal from them in the process. Another way to steal from all targets at once is to use the mega all materia. This materia can be found in the northern cave, and it makes the steal command target all enemies instead of just one. Next is what affects your sh chance of successfully stealing an item. And there are only three things, and they are your level, and this is the only one you have any control over, as higher levels increases the chance of stealing. The next one is your target's level, and each enemy has a fixed level, so this can't be changed. And the last one is the item chance value, and all enemies have fixed items you can steal from them, and the chance value is a fixed value for that enemy and item. There isn't much variation to this value, however, as it can only take on three values, and they are 8, 32, and 63, and the last one, 63, is really rare, and there are only four items with the chance value in the game. One myth concerning stealing is that dexterity will give you a higher chance to steal, and one reason for this could be that ste the steel materia gives you plus one dexterity. This is something I also believed when I was younger, but alas, dexterity has no effect. This means that you always want your highest level character stealing, unless you have more than one steel materia equipped. Another little myth is that if you have steel materia combined with steel as well, you get two steel attempts per use of steel. Uh, I tried this out, and uh, from my trials, I couldn't see that it worked that way. Uh, it didn't increase my chance to steal the item. And now it's going to get a little bit technical here, but these variables I mentioned before are crammed into this formula here, which first can take, compares your level to the enemy level, adds 40 to the difference, and multiplies that with 5.12. After that, the resulting value is multiplied with the item chance value, and divided by 256. What is important is that this formula results in an integer between 0 and 63. A random number is then generated by the game, also between 0 and 63, and if it is lower than or equal to the number from the formula, the item is stolen. There is an item which, depending on your level, will make stealing easier. Now the lower level you are, the better it is, and that is the sneak level. You can get this accessory after Cloud has returned to the party in Medeal, and to get it you first need to find the key to Sector 5, which can be dug up in the Bone Village by looking for good treasure and digging in this location. Opening the chests it should give you the key. After that, make your way back to Midgar, and you should now be able to pass through this gate. Make your way to Wall Market and to the Weapon Shop, and talk to the guy in the back. The one that sold you the batteries right before you storm into the Shindra HQ on disc 1, and he will sell you the sneak glove for 129,000 gil. So it is fairly expensive, but it could be worth it if you have a lot of stealing to do. Now the sneak glove will let you skip the step where your level is compared to the enemy level, and instead always return the maximum value of 100. This means that if you have the sneak gloves equipped, you will have around 26.56% or about one quarter chance to steal an item with a chance value of 8, or a 100% chance to steal an item with a chance value of 32 and 63. Now this figure shows the chance to steal an item based on your level compared to the enemy level, and it shows that you will have a linear increase in chance to steal an item from 0% when you are 40 levels below your target, up to a maximum of 100% at 60 levels above your target. You're usually going to be around the same level as your target, and here are your chances of stealing the item at equal levels. So around 11% for an item with a chance value of 8, 40% 
for chance value 32 and 80% for chance value 63. Like I mentioned, with the sneak gloves equipped or at 60 levels above your target, the chance to steal will be 26.56% for value 8 and 100% for 32 and 63. Now moving on, we're going to be looking at the interesting steals in the game. And here I'll list the useful and or unique stealable items in the game. I'll show a graph with the chance to steal the item, along with the item chance value, your target's level for each of these steals. Like I said, you get the steal materia in the sewers, and in the very first area after that you can find your first useful steals. First is the Dean Glow, uh, which appears in the train graveyard and it has an ether available. This is useful if you want to restore your MP, but they also sell for 750 gil, which can be a nice way to get an early boost to your wallet. The second enemy is the Ghost, which also appears in the train graveyard and it has a Ghost Hand. This is a battle item which drains some MP from the target, and I list it here mostly because it is a unique steal which you can only get from this enemy at this time. Next is another enemy that appears in the train graveyard, and that is the, the Eligor, which has a stealable striking stuff. This is a weapon for Aerith, which has 32 attack, 4 slots and 7 magic, and you won't find a better weapon for her until you reach Yunon, which is quite far off at this point. Next is an enemy which appears in the Sector 5 slums, and that is the Vice, which has a speed drink. This is the only way to apply haste to your party until you get the buggy after the events in Coral Prison, so it can be a nice addition to your inventory. In the Shindra HQ you will find the Moth Slasher, which has carbon bangles to steal. It is the best armor available at this point, with 27 defense, 14 magic defense and 3 slots. And you can't buy this one until you reach Yunon, so you'll have it for quite a while. Another enemy appearing in the Shinra HQ is the Soldier 3rd, and they have the Hard Edge as a steal. It is Cloud's best weapon at this point, with 32 attack, 6 magic and 4 slots. And again, it's Cloud's best weapon until you reach Yunon. After exiting Midgar you can find the Custom Sweeper on the dirt area and it has the Atomic Scissors. This is Barris best weapon at this point with 32 attack, 4 magic and 4 slots. Like before it is his best weapon until you reach Junon. The next useful steal is in the Mithril Mines from the Madug enemy, I uh, don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but anyway it has the Grand Glove. This is a weapon for Tifa which has 31 attack, 6 magic and 4 slots and it is her best weapon until you reach Yunon. Granted, Yunon isn't very far off once you reach the Mithril Mines. Outside the Mithril Mines in the forest you can find the Formula enemy, which has a boomerang. It is again a weapon, uh, this time for Yuffie, uh, with 30 attack, 7 magic and 4 slots. But this weapon can also be bought in Yunon, so unless you want to save some money, you can just wait and buy it there. The next enemy is found in the ship taking you from Junon to Costa del Sol, and it is the Marine, which has the unique steel Shinra Beta, which has 30 defense and 4 slots. Aside from being a good armor at this point, it is basically the only place to get this armor. The next enemy is found on Mount Coral, and that is the Search Crown. Stealing from these guys is the first place to get the Turbo Ethers, which is a quite useful item as it restores all your MP. Up next is another enemy in Mount Coral, and that is the Bomb. And these guys have a very useful attack item called Right Arm, which is, hits all the enemies and has a base damage of 1600 damage, which is a lot at this point in the game. In Gongaga, you can run into the Kimbra Bug, and these guys have a useful item called Spiderwebs. It is an attack item that costs slow on all targets. Um, it is the most reliable way of getting this item, which is very nice to have. The next good steal is found in Mount Nibel and the enemy dragon. From them you can get gold armlets, which is the best armor at that point, with 46 defense, 28 magic defense and 4 slots. They can however be purchased in Rocket Town, which is the next town we get to, but it's always nice to save some money if nothing else. On the beaches around Wutai, you find the Adamantai Mai, 
which has another armor, the Adamant Bangle. It has the third highest defense of all armors in the game at 93 and magic defense at 23. But the downside is that it has only two slots, but it's still a great armor for physical defense. Next we're going to the beaches around Medeal, as you can find the sea worm there. These guys have Dragon Scale, which is probably the strongest attack item in the game, dealing 3680 base damage as water. So it is a very powerful item unless the enemy is resistant to water. In the Great Glacier, in the place you get the Alexander Materia, is the next useful steal. The enemy Snow, you fight in order to acquire the Materia, has a circlet available for stealing. Uh, it is a great accessory which gives you 30 magic and spirit, and it is the first place you find it until Gold Saucer reopens, or before you revisit Midgar when the ultimate weapon appears. In Gaea's Cliff you fight the boss Schizo, and his right head has a protect ring. This ring gives you barrier and magic barrier at the start of each fight, and it's the only place to get this accessory aside from morphing movers in the northern cave. The next enemy can be found in the North Crater, and it is the Gigas, which has the Gigas Armlet. This is an armor with 59 defense, no magic defense, 5 slot, and it also gives you plus 30 strength, which is quite a lot at this point in the game. Downside to it is that it has no material growth. Aside from stealing this armor from the Gigas, the only other way to get it is off a drop from the Demon's Gate boss in the Temple of the Ancients. Next up is a miniboss, the Eagle Gun on the coal train in Mount Coral, and it has a Warrior Bangle as a stealable item. This is a unique steal, so it's the only way to get it is by stealing it from this unique enemy. Uh, it has 96 defense, 25 magic defense, uh, 4 slots, and give you plus 20 strength. But again, the downside is that it has no material growth. Diamond Weapon has another unique steal when you fight him outside Midgar. And this is the Rising Sun weapon for Yuffie, which has uh, 68 attack, 4 slots with a double growth. This is Yuffie's best weapon with double growth, and like I said, it is the only place you can get this weapon. Next up is another weapon, namely the Ultimate Weapon. And this one's a bit special, as it has 3 stealable items, but only one per location. When you first fight the boss in Medeal, you can steal the Curse Ring from it. This accessory boosts your stats by quite a, a bit, giving you plus 35 strength and magic, plus 15 dexterity and vitality and spirit, and plus 10 luck. The downside being that it gives you death sentence, but this can be remedied by casting uh, the enemy skill death force on the wearer. It is also one of only two available you can find throughout the game. When chasing ultimate weapon, trying to defeat it, he has a circlet in the aerial battles, and the aerial battles are fought in Junon, Coral, Medeal and Mount Nibel. Again, it is a great accessory, giving you 30 magic and spirit. When you find, fight him on the ground, and those are Fort Condor, Gongaga, Midgar and Northern Cave, you can steal the Reflect Ring from him. This ring, as the name suggests, gives you the reflect status in battle. Uh, it is the only place you can find the accessory aside from winning one from Genova Death in the North Crater. Moving on to the Turks, and here I'll look at them one at a time even though you face them in groups a couple of times. The first one is Rude, and he has the armor Cydric. You can steal this item from him three times in Rocket Town, Sunken Gilnica and Midgar. This is the strongest armor in the game, defense-wise, with 100 defense, 98 magic defense, and aside from having the highest defense and magic defense in the game, it also halves almost all incoming damage, from elemental to physical attacks. The downside is that it has no slots, but it is extremely good at reducing incoming damage. The next Turk on the list is Reno, and in the two last encounters against him, he has the Tough Ring. This is another unique item, which can only be stolen from Reino these two times. The encounters are in Sunken Gilnica and Midgar, and the item provides a massive toughness boost giving you plus 50 vitality and spirit, and it can be a very useful accessory to have. 
The final Turk is Elena, and you only fight her once, and that is in Midgar. She has the Minerva Band, which is one of the best armors in the game, with 60 defense, 57 magic defense, and 6 dots. In addition to that, it nullifies all fire, ice, holy, and gravity damage. It can, however, only be equipped by your female characters, so only Tifa and Yuffie. I would say Aerith, but unfortunately, she is no longer with us at this point in the game. This next item is another armor which can only be stolen. It is the Shinra Alpha, and while there are three enemies who has it, you face two of them, the Captain and the Underwater MP, in limited numbers, a maximum of around 10, and the Soldier First can only be fought in the return trip to Midgar. It is a decent armor with 77 defense, 34 magic defense, and 6 slots, but I list it here mostly because it's missable unless you steal it from those enemies at those times. There are only two enemies left on my list, and the first one is the Master Tonberry. These little guys can be found in the northern cave, and you can steal elixirs from them. Elixirs are great, not only for fully restoring HP and MP to one character, but they can also be used for grinding against magic pot enemies in the same area. Lastly is another enemy in the northern cave, uh, which has elixirs. It is the Gighi, or something like that, I don't know the exact pronunciation of that. And uh, notably this is harder to steal compared to the, from the Master Tonberry, so you can steal from the Tonberries instead. As a side note, I mentioned at the beginning that I made a separate video on the Vagras Claw, which is the hardest item to steal in the game. So if you're interested in that, you can check out that video, and then I put the link in the description. And that is it for my video on stealing in Final Fantasy VII. So I went from looking at how stealing works, to listing, in my opinion, all the useful and or unique steals in the game. So thank you for watching, and until next time, have a good time!